Welcome to Unit 3, Lecture 3, Photosynthesis, an Overview. Learning Objectives. Explain the role of pigments in the process of photosynthesis. Describe the role of electron carrier molecules. Identify the reactants and products of photosynthesis. So pigments are anything that make color. And the way that they make color is they actually capture and uh, capture sunlight and in that process of capturing sunlight okay, they actually release or what's the word I'm looking for uh, they reflect the colors that we're looking at so my uh, that's a bad example my shirt is purple okay so my shirt is purple but the reason it's purple is because it's got pigments in it that show you every other color but reflect purple because color actually exists on a uh, continuum all right so sunlight is actually white light that's made up of a bunch of different colors the rainbow okay anytime we see a rainbow what happened is we've in that, broken that light apart what plants do is they and other for photosynthetic organisms but what they do is they actually capture the energy from sunlight with these pigments and then can use it to propel reactions so the principal pigment in photosynthesis is chlorophyll okay that's the principal pigment and what that is is that's what makes green plants green and so you'll see that chlorophyll all right, is actually in the chloroplast. And what that does is that harnesses the sunlight to then go through photosynthesis. The chloroplast structure, there are three main parts to the chloroplast. So the chloroplast is inside a plant cell. Okay. And we have the thylakoid, which are these little pillows right here. They look like little pillows. We have stacks of thylakoid, which are called grana. So when we put them all together, or granum for singular. Okay. So those thylakoid membranes are basically just places for this reaction to happen. They're little pillows of desktop, if you will. Okay. And then last but not least, we have stroma. So stroma is just kind of like this, the fluid inside between all of the thylakoids. It's kind of like the cell's cytoplasm, but it's inside the chloroplast. Electron carriers. Electron carriers, so electrons, if you remember E negatives, they're the things that are participating in bonds. Okay, they're the things that are used, are energy. All right, when we think about chemical reactions, electrons are all energy. What they do is they actually require something to carry them. So NADPH, whoopsie, NADP, oh, come on, silly technology. All right, NADPH is an electron carrier, okay? And this basically is a chemical backpack. What it does is it actually puts the electron into it, or two electrons here, you can see, puts the electrons into it to make the NADPH to carry to some reaction. Then over the course of that reaction, it gets emptied, it gets used, and it becomes NADP plus to go back into NADPH. It's very similar to the ATP ADP cycle that we talked about in the last lecture. It's basically the same thing happening. But here we're talking about specifically just shuttling these electrons from one area to the next. Photosynthesis uses the energy of sunlight to convert water and carbon dioxide, which are called low energy reactants, into high energy sugars and oxygen. So if we think about it, okay, so this is sugar, right? this is glucose. This has calories. If you were to eat sugar, you're taking in calories. These have no calories. So what plants do is they use the energy from the sun 
to take no calorie things to turn them into calorie things, okay, and turn them into food. So not food, we can't just inhale carbon dioxide, number one, we can, okay, and ingest water and suddenly feel full. All right, we need actual energy, so we actually need those calories. So glucose becomes food. Now oxygen is then released, which is lucky for us because then we can actually breathe that in. In photosynthesis, there are two sets of reactions, and you're going to see from the last slide, you're going to see the reactants and the products coming in here. Okay, so here's a picture of the chloroplast. So this outside is the chloroplast. Okay. We got the thylakoids, all right, and then this um, outside the thylakoids is the stroma. So the first half are the light dependent reactions. Light dependent reactions. So that means they need light. Okay. And then we have the second half, which are the light independent reactions. It means they don't need light. So light dependent reactions happen in the thylakoid, thylakoid, okay, and light independent reactions happen in the stroma, okay, so they happen in that fluid that's around the thylakoid. And if you'll notice, NADPH and NATP um, go back and forth. We'll talk a little bit about that. So light dependent reactions require the direct involvement of light and light absorbing pigments like chlorophyll. Okay. This is where the water comes into play. So we've got water goes in, in, light goes in. Okay. This is where oxygen comes out. So if you remember, the water was a reactant of photosynthesis and the oxygen was a product. So in the light dependent reactions, what's happening here is with the water and the light and the chlorophyll are working together okay, to actually make the NADPH and the ATP to go into the next step. Okay, so we're going to have to do the next step. All right, so the light dependent reactions come first, putting these things together or taking these, you know, and using these parts to build this. NADPH and ATP. So that NADPH and ATP can go into the light independent reactions. So the light independent reactions then take the NADPH and the ATP, all right, and they take carbon dioxide in, and then this is where they can make the sugars, C6H12O6. Right? And then those sugars can then be used for cell respiration, which is going to be our next lecture. So the two halves of photosynthesis, the light dependent and the light independent reactions, work together in order to make the sugar. Okay. And then we have these middle ones here. So that's basically just the NADPH and ATP that get made during the light dependent reactions are used up, okay, so they're made here, uh, let me, whoops, erase some of those lines, okay, so let's pick a different color, all right, so NADPH and ATP are made during the light dependent reactions and used during the light independent reactions, whereas on the bottom here, ADP is made Basically, we've taken off the extra phosphorus group, phosphate group, okay? And NADPH, the backpack has been emptied, all right? And then they are used, so then they can keep going around in this cycle, okay? So that's everything. So I will see you in class. Have a great day.